In part two of my Madeira travel series, I visit two incredible locations on the island, Ponta São Lorenco and Pico de Ario. In this video, I share my experience of photographing these locations. The first location is Ponta São Lorenco. This peninsula is the easternmost point of the island and is particularly known for its rugged and dramatic coastline. It's a spectacular sunrise location due to its eastern outlook and as a peninsula it offers a great location to experience changeable weather conditions ideally suited for landscape photography. Good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to day two on the island of Madeira. Uh, for sunrise we've come to a place called Sao Lorenzo um, and it's really sort of like the tip and the point of Madeira. Um, as you can see behind me it kind of goes all the way all the way to the end there and yeah it's quite a popular sunrise location as the sun pretty much comes up right where where that end bit is it was a bit frantic uh, this morning um, as the sunlight just sort of just kicked off really it was really lovely actually um, but probably needed to be here sort of 10-15 minutes earlier um, it's probably one location that I'll come back to later in the week potentially um, just because it's kind of one of those shots that I really want to get here in Madeira. But yeah, it's lovely. Uh, so yeah, just the colours were, were amazing this morning. Managed to get the drone up for a little bit as well um, and get some B-roll, um, which was quite nice. Um, but again, probably a little bit too late. But uh, anyway, I hope, hope um, I got some nice shots there um, and I'll, I'll put them up uh, right about now. Yeah, it's such a such a great location. Um, it's great to you can sort of watch the the weather pass by. You can watch the the little little pockets of, of rain that are passing throughout the the ocean. Um, yeah, it's really amazing. didn't take the right path um, up to the to the viewpoint or we we didn't actually get to the to the sort of best viewpoint as it were you can go a little bit higher than where I was which um, yeah a little bit disappointed that I wouldn't didn't manage to get up there but uh, it was one of those scenarios where I didn't didn't quite have the time to do it it was almost like I could get a shot where I was with the right light um, or you know I could kind of race against the light and try to get a better shot um, and probably, you know, wouldn't have got the best light. So it was kind of one of those, really. Ponta São Lorenco is also an excellent location for hiking, and I believe you can walk all the way out to the tip of the peninsula. We couldn't quite fit this into our itinerary, but it's perhaps one thing to do on our next visit. One thing I did quite like about this area was just how different it was compared to the rest of the island. Surprisingly, although this area is quite exposed, it receives less rainfall compared to other areas of the island, which creates quite a dry and barren looking landscape. Having seen some images, the landscape does spring into life in the winter, with a light dusting of greenery. The next day I went back for sunrise, hoping to capture similar conditions and improve on some of the compositions I found. Not wanting to make the same mistake, I arrived early with plenty of time to make the hike. Getting there much earlier also allowed me to capture some images during the blue hour, get everything set up and make sure I had a good spot. I saw during the previous day that the viewpoint does get quite busy. In hindsight, I'm glad I went back for that second visit as the conditions were quite different. As you can see here, there was much more direct sunlight, which opened up so many more photographic opportunities, particularly with the drone.
just finished with a sunrise shoot at uh, Sao Lorenzo. Um, decided to come back here again um, after the last time um, and yeah definitely kind of learned from the mistakes um, and came here much much earlier and um, good thing I did because it was quite a not it wasn't a difficult hike up but um, it was uh, quite a steep one and uh, with a camera bag full of equipment it, um, it can get a bit bit tricky um, so got up there nice and early and it was quite nice actually because uh, I could just sort of take a take a bit of a breather and just sort of watch um, as the sun kind of rises um, and sort of gave me some um, time to set up a, a composition um, but yeah absolutely amazing light this morning um, you know it's, Madeira has this incredible power of making you think that you know there's not going to be a sunrise or a sunset and then out of nowhere the light just appears and it all just happens um, it's yeah it's just amazing um, got some nice sort of light rays this morning as well um, but the colors were were beautiful I had to um, scrabble around to find the right composition but I think I, I kind of found a nice one with the rock formation And now moving on to Pico Adio, the third highest peak on the island and probably one of the most accessible peaks as well. From the car park to the peak is probably 200 meters. There's also a nice cafe and restaurant, which certainly makes it feel like an alpine resort. The drive to the top was spectacular and as you drive through the clouds, you're never quite sure what the weather will be like at the top. You do eventually burst through the clouds and you do get that great feeling like you're on top of the world looking down at the clouds. And we've made it to the top of uh, Pico do Ario. And yeah, I think this is the third highest peak in Madeira. And yeah, wonderful conditions. It just looks amazing to be honest. We're sort of sat just above the cloud. Um, and yeah, we're just kind of watching the clouds sort of drift over the mountains and yeah, it all just looks really amazing. Um, getting so many great shots, I think. Um, I'm probably sort of doing, um, trying to get uh, a long exposure of the clouds um, as they kind of run past some of the peaks. Going to be here for uh, a little bit longer um, just until the sun sets which I'm not really sure how that will work out um, as we're sort of above the cloud line so whether um, you know the best the best of the light the best of the conditions is just before it peaks below the cloud line I'm not too sure I guess we'll find out One thing I really loved photographing up there was the clouds and how they flowed over the mountainside. It was quite mesmerising to watch. So we've stayed up here to watch the sunset and um, yeah, we're just watching the, the wonderful uh, cloud formations uh, in the valley below. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. Um, but yeah, it's amazing how to change, um, how the clouds uh, change color and how they move as well. I 
did find that being above the clouds didn't really give you much opportunity for a typical sunset or sunrise, by that I mean a colourful sky, and once the sun gets down to a certain level, much of the mountains were shaded. But it did make way for these amazing cloud formations in the valley. Good morning everybody. So as you can see behind me, we've come to the top of Pico de Ario. So I just come up here for sunrise, just so I can get some, some different light on the, on the mountains. Um, when we did come up here for sunset, um, a lot of the mountains I was shooting was, most of it was in the, sh in the shade. Um, but obviously the sun setting the other way, um, kind of getting some nice light on the, on the mountains. And the atmosphere is quite a little bit hazy, a little bit misty, but it's, it's really nice. I think it really adds to the atmosphere of the place um, and getting some nice sort of soft diffused light on the, on the mountains. Um, so I've just been exploring um, just towards the, the top of the, uh, the mountain, the peak. Um, and yeah, just sort of scouting out a few locations, trying a few different things. Um, I just love the, the contrast between the, the greenery um, in the foreground and the, the really mountainous uh, background. For a couple of days on our trip, the mountains were completely clear of clouds and very warm. A good thing if you're out on a hike, but not so great for taking photos. The result was a hazy atmosphere which was quite difficult for the sun to pierce through. I did struggle somewhat with the conditions, I also struggled a bit with my compositions as I found the sun rose at an awkward angle, meaning a lot of the key peaks and areas of interest were in shadow. To add insult to injury, it was very windy that morning and getting the drone up would be quite tricky. I probably could have if I wanted to, but I felt the conditions were a bit bland and it wasn't worth taking the risk. My final visit to Pico de Ario was at sunset and by this point in the trip, the clouds had returned to the mountains, so I thought it was worth one last visit to get a few more shots. The conditions were so much better compared to the previous visit, with a lot less haze in the atmosphere. Although I'm happy with some of the shots I did get, I do think I could get more out of this location and if I were to visit again I would probably explore the trail further away from the main viewpoint. Sao Lorenco and Pico de Ario are two spectacular locations, well worth a visit. And that wraps up this video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>